Today I just wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite plants in the countryside and that's the acanthus. This is a plant that's grown in the Mediterranean climate. Traditionally if you want to propagate this plant you would do it by rhizome and divide up the plant. But I found here a technique that I would like to show you here at the end of the video. But first I'll give you a history of the plant and how it became popularized. It's originally from Greece and it's well known in cemeteries just like Cyprus is here in Spain. Their, their leaves are a very common architectural motif and it is most well represented in the Olympian Temple of Zeus. Later on the Romans took on the same archetype and they adapted it to their own needs. The Acanthus mollis or spinosus also represents uh, rebirth and I suppose that has to do with how it's uh, perennial and it comes back after completely dying back to the ground. The leaves dry out during the, the dry season and with the first rains it magically comes back to life. So I suppose this is why it represents a rebirth. It's a beautiful architectural plant to have in your borders or anywhere. It's well adapted. It's adapted well to shade. Here in the Mediterranean climate it should be in almost full shade. Maybe in the northern climates you can get away with planting them in partial shade as long as it doesn't dry out. Here I treat my plants quite rough and I don't water them throughout the whole season but I, when I see they are suffering I'll give them a drink of water in the summer and they do most of their growth throughout winter here in the Mediterranean climate and starting in fall going through winter all the way through spring. Once they have their grip on a patch of soil you may have a hard time getting them to let go because once they've grabbed on they're going to quickly spread throughout the, the bed. However, this minor hassle is well worth it come spring when it gives you a towering flower spike of white and violet flowers, which are absolute bee magnets. You can see here there's a new sprout coming up, just establishing itself. And here, ooh, that one is about to tear it out. There's one here too that does is doing really well. There's several. I'm gonna have to thin them out because it's just too much in one area. So once the towering spikes of flowers have given off their show, they can become a bit unsightly, and you probably want to cut them down. Uh, I urge you really to resist this because a way to get hundreds of plants it would be just to let the, the spikes completely dry out and if you're like me I think they have their own beauty to them and can be appreciated for their, their brown dry look especially here in the Mediterranean where it's inevitable that everything just dries out because and you really have to conserve water here and many times it's too much just to try to keep a plant alive during the summer months when it's consistently 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. So here are the stalks. I, I had actually thrown them out, put them in my compost bin and because I, I didn't think they were that important for this video but then I realized they were. So this one's starting it's to be decomposed and you can see here where the pods sort of just let go of their seeds. And in the heat of the summer you can really hear the, the snapping of these plants because they'll just catapult them all over the place and soon you'll see seeds everywhere on the ground. A lot of ants pick them up so hopefully they spread a few out. And Maybe they'll pop up somewhere in an unexpected place. To get hundreds of plants, I really recommend just doing a uh, chop and drop with all the weeds that pop up and at the end just throwing the, the spikes there on the ground. 
and wait for the fall rains. Well, at least in the Mediterranean climate. I'm sure this process would happen in spring in most northern climates, like in England where this plant is very popular. Anybody lives in the UK and knows more about this plant uh, and how it behaves in your climate, uh, let me know in the comments. So now I'll show you all of the volunteers that have sprouted up. They just started sprouting up by the hundreds. I have tons of plants here to pot up and try to plant out throughout the, the garden. The problem is here I don't have many shaded areas. This is one of the few shaded areas I have. I have one that might be an appropriate spot for them. And I think just, this is one of the easiest techniques you can find to propagate this plant. And it's a no-hassle way of doing it. And then they really like this water here. I think it's because the water just sheets off there when we get the rain. Here I have a mixture of coconut coir and earthworm castings, or worm castings. And I'm going to pot up the acanthus with it. Here's some of the plants that we potted up earlier. Here's all the acanthus I've potted up so far. There's no signs of them yet, but here I used the paper towel method with some seeds that I had collected. And they're a bit slower to sprout up, but I did start it much later. And as you can see, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Acanthus is a wonderful plant to have in your garden. And I think you should get one or two plants wherever you can. And then just let them go to seed and use the chop and drop method to allow the soil to get plenty of moisture in the wet season and that way you'll have hundreds of plants to pot up for uh, spring. I think this is a wonderful addition in, to any garden especially in the Mediterranean climate where they're originally from and they absolutely thrive in a shaded or semi shaded area. So if you like this video and want more content like this like and subscribe and I hope to take you along on my journey at my garden and show you how I'm using permaculture and regenerative techniques to transform the land building up soil making the land more drought resistant I hope to see you here again